Beautiful. Ah, welcome. Welcome to the series of Meet the Faculty here at Nikila Tempo. And today we have the pleasure to meet one of the faculty facil facilitators, Carol Squire. And she's here uh, with me and we're going to have such a great time together diving into the Essence Retreat and the uh, Fourth Way and the Gorgeous Movement and uh, all the mysteries that seekers are longing to find. And I'm so excited that you're here, Carol. Thank you so much for your time and energy and uh, your love and, and, and everything that you are. So thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Raisa. And um, unfortunately, we were not able to make it live tonight, but uh, I hope this recording will serve those who are curious about what all the things are that I mentioned earlier. And uh, if anybody has any comments, questions, uh, that come up during this video or this recording, uh, please make them in the comments section so that uh, I can um, either I can ask, answer them or I can pass, pass on the questions to Carol and we'll have a deeper conversation that way. And so <laughs> I'm so excited. So I, I personally came in contact with the fourth way and the Gurdjieff movement to actually just a bit over two years ago when I started with the uh, apprenticeship with Taki Diandeep Antigone. And uh, she was teaching TA, transactional analysis. And she was so, um, uh, insightful in the way that she in, 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 in introducing us to this um, uh, form of uh, teaching that you're offering. Uh, for me, it has been totally uh, life changing because the way that it brings the teachings into form, into matter, into my everyday life, how I start I've started living them is incredible and my whole life has become a living meditation, living presence, living purpose. And so and this is just totally my experience and I want to thank you for the past two years, Carol, for, for that offering. And my first question actually is to you, how do you see what uh, the fourth way and the Gurdjieff movements are and how are they different from any other uh, teachings or offerings out there? Wow. The fourth way. The fourth way implies that there are the first three ways. And, and if we look at the sorts of things that we've done to, to learn, to, to to seek truth um, within ourselves and, and outside. We know that those ways are valid. There's the way of, of embodiment, of learning with our bodies and learning what our bodies can tell us. Uh, there's the way of our intellect and we study and we learn frameworks and we, we, we watch and we observe ourselves and we see more clearly. And then there's the way of the heart, which is the opening to all that all that we can't understand with the head. Um, those, those higher feelings of joy and gratitude and, and kindness, and generosity. And so the fourth way posits that each of us is stronger perhaps, or, or more, we lean more toward one of those other ways, the, the, the head way, the body way, the heart way, um, and the fourth way says, we need them all, and they all need to be developed, and they need to be developed harmoniously within each of us. So we need to integrate. It's a way of integration. And the interesting thing and the thing that makes it different is that because each of us is unique, there is no one cookie cutter approach. Um, what you need to develop is not the same thing that I need and what we need today isn't the same thing we'll need tomorrow. So the fourth way puts it all together and the movements in particular and Gurdjieff's work in particular 
focuses everything around never losing sight of all three centers, our head, our heart, and our body. Becoming whole. So that's what it's about in, in essence. <laughs> yeah, because when, when all of our centers are functioning as they should, and when they're working together, then what we really are, our essence, is allowed to shine to shine out otherwise we're trying to juggle everything our unbalanced centers our unbalanced lives and we're juggling it with our personality mm. and until we align our centers and get them working better together the personality is what we're going to lean on and that's not who we are that ego is not who we really are right. so we want to cut through to essence the keyword essence that's beautiful and that must be the thing that cannot be taught or uh given but it has to be revealed and discovered right yeah and the the, the best thing is that other people see your essence very clearly i see yours from the first day we met on zoom i've seen yours Raisa. so you know it's up to each of us to to live into to live into our essence it's already there that's beautiful thank you carol and and i've actually never met you in person which is making this so much more exciting uh, to have this conversation and to be connected uh on the other side of the world or two different sides of the world and uh, uh, do this work together and you are bringing um, this work to Finland, to Nikola Temple, this summer, July 23rd to 28th. And uh, the retreat is called Essence. And I'm, I'm wondering if you could tell me and the uh, people listening and watching this recording that, um, first of all, what can they expect on, on the retreats and what's the essence about? And, and, and again, how is this work serving their lives in their daily life? What can they take home from that? Well, first of all, I am so excited to be coming to Nicola for the first time um, and to meet you in person. Um, the work that we'll be doing, it's gonna be fairly intense. Uh, we'll start early in the morning with some sort of centering practice or sitting or meditation. It can change depending on what, what we need. Um, after breakfast, we will start doing the Gurdjieff movements. And the movements are this incredible, oh God, it's almost a technology um, that in the process of attempting to learn these movements, we learn about ourselves. It's, although the task before us is to learn these seemingly um, impossible combinations of gestures um, that we require focus and attention on separate parts of our body with different rhythms and the music and a different count with the head or the legs and the feet. Um, and what's happening is when we are pushed to use all of our centers in order to learn these, because it's not possible to learn without the heart or the head or the body, um, as we're pushed to do this, we see what our personality is throwing up in the way. Right. And so then we have this chance to observe it and to learn that we don't need to react to it. Um, and, and we learn that by just standing in that and seeing it, um, we can decide to go past it. And so it is incredibly practical. Not that we're going to go out and do the movements out on the street in your, <laughs> or in your kitchen. Um, you've seen them and you've done them. So you know that that would be sort of ridiculous. Although I sort of do that too sometimes. Um, 
<laughs> but the the thing is that what we're learning to do, which is observe um, the sorts of resistance that our personality throws up to us getting down and living from and working from essence. Mm. Um, we learn to be able to choose not to be hijacked by it. Mm. That is beautifully said. Thank you so much. Yeah, the the thing is, in my own experience, I, I remember and I know that um, when I'm doing these movements and I'm doing this work, is is it's impossible to do it with only one center. And if I'm focusing on the head center, the body is just totally like, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> and and it just what my mind judges that I fail, even though I don't don't fail, but it, it just says it shows it shows me where I am at with myself, where is my attention, where I am giving my energy to, and uh, where I am out of balance, basically. So it's beautiful. It's a it's a very revealing tool, to, uh, in my opinion. And, and, and that's, I mean, it's beautifully said, and, and you've clearly observed a lot in not very many hours of movements <laughs> online. In person, it is so much more powerful. And, and the other piece that is important is that we'll be sharing. We'll have, we'll have a chance to articulate what's coming up for us in the moment with each other. Um, and we'll be there to support each other, to learn from each other. Um, the articulation of it is, is, is very important. So it's not only movement and silent meditations, but it's also uh, giving words to own experiences. Exactly. In different forms. We'll, we'll do some psychodrama sorts of games. We'll, we'll have different forms of conversation. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do some conscious work uh, for the temple on the grounds so that we can take the sorts of things we're learning in the movements about watching ourselves and then take it out into regular ordinary tasks of working together as a team. And then we get to share what happened there because that is once again, very revealing. Mm, that's beautiful. And, and so the group is also supporting and in, in crucial role in this practice. So it's not just about doing the work on your own and doing your own work, inner work, but it's actually working in a group and as a group. Yeah, absolutely, very much so. And that's what we can't get online, which is the, the hardest part mm -hmm. of doing these. They should not be taught online, honestly. And I have been now since for two years. Um, so I'm so, like I said, so excited about coming and being with you with a group of, of sincere seekers who are ready for a challenge. Um, I don't want to scare anybody off. It's not physically challenging. In other words, people of all fitness levels can do this. We've worked with people in wheelchairs. Um, and it doesn't anything. require dance skills or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We we come as we are. <laughs> yeah, and, and I I like the I really appreciate also the um, principle that we are enough as we are. And so, um, what I've gained from that is is exactly that that when I just show up, I am enough as I am, and. It, even though I may be messy sometimes, and even though it sometimes may be harmonious and very zen-like, and I've reached um, a state of peace, but it's, 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 it doesn't matter. It's, it's still me, and I, I am enough, and it's beautiful. Thank you for passing that. Not only are you enough, there is no final blissful harmonized space to get to. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, the, the world is, is constantly evolving. And so what we're learning are the skills to be moving through the transitions and, and understanding that wherever we are right now, it's going to change. Mm. We, we can't hold on to it, good or bad. That is true. Yeah. So and what we do is we enjoy, literally with joy, the process. Right. We're going through these changes, um, the world, us, the group, 
Mm. Um, we can't hold on to it. It's not going to just sit there for us. Yeah. And that is actually something that I, I really honor you for uh, bringing into this and, and through this work is that, uh, yes, we cannot really um, just, I'm going to take this I'm going to take this part of the teachings or this part of my life or this part of the world because I like it and I'm going to leave this out because I don't like it. It brings me stress and anxiety or whatever, but exactly I'm taking it all and I'm having fun and I'm enjoying it, even though it sometimes feels terrible, but I'm enjoying it anyway. <laughs> so life know. is messy. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the way through it is, is to enjoy every step. Yeah. And actually, uh, what it also brings to my next question to you is that um, you mentioned the times in, in, in that we're in. And, and so how do you see this work in these times of global initiation of, for people that um, uh, obviously are shaken by the global events uh, and um, not necessarily are aware of what's going on spiritually uh, and globally. So how would you address, address to that? Oh, you know, um, as you know, 30, 40 years of my life has been out in the world working, trying to, dare I say, fix, fix the problems. Um, I think trying to save the world now is um, a fool's errand. Um, not that it's not savable, but that the real work is our own transformation and that each of us can and is a force for good. And the cleaner and clearer and closer to essence that each of us become, the more positive impact we are having mm -hmm. and whereas i would love to be able to think that maybe there was some magic bullet to fix all the problems of the world i honestly have come to the conclusion that each of us has a responsibility to be putting out the most positive vibration for for good it's not a it's not a weak um, passive sort of space that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a very active broadcasting of good that we can and do do. Mm. And that our work, therefore, together is to help each other. Right. I'm stronger, become clearer, and possibly then go out into the world and impact others and help them to become stronger and to become clearer. Wow. Yeah. That's what I think this work is. Yeah. So not giving your power away, but rather owning it. And even though maybe we may be tumbling down or falling down, we always get up and we also have help. Yeah. And, you know, I know they keep saying this and it sounds like a cliche, but it is the storm is darkest before dawn. Mm. And if we are clear that we will not lose hope, mm. that we will not give in to despair, that we will not allow the forces that would really like us to be there so that they can control us, we're not gonna go there. Mm. And so we will be ready when the time is right, when dawn comes or when the storm intensifies, We'll be the ones to stand there and say, yeah, now we know. And we will have the values that we will have co-created and the conscience that we will have developed and that will be strong enough for any of the difficulties that we will face. Wow, yeah. That's so powerful, that's so powerful. I'm so excited. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah. we'll be co-creating that space. In, in July together. Wow. Yeah. It's um, uh, at the same time, it's exhilarating and it's exciting and it, it's really powerful. And 
I'm on board. I'm on totally on board, and I will be there. And I'm just wondering uh, if there is anybody who is thinking that uh, this sounds a lot, and how am I this one person? How can I take on the uh, responsibility of uh, making this a better place to live for everybody? And it's just the knowing that I only need to focus on myself and do the work on myself, and. Um, yeah, well, and spread it and spread it because you know Gurdjieff said and the Sufis say we're not we're not going to live in a cave. We're coming to Nicola for a week, yeah, um, and then we're going back out into the world. And we change things when we listen to somebody without judgment. We change things when we smile at someone instead of walking by them without looking at them. It has a um, ripple effect. There are so many effects. Yeah. And we can either be a force for, I don't want to say bad, but, but how many opportunities do I miss in a day mm. to actually shine from my heart some some extra gratitude or recognition or appreciation for somebody just being there mm. I miss so many mm. so I don't want to miss them I want to I want to multiply them oh this is actually one of the things that I I also honor in you Carol is that um you bring in the humanness and the intimacy into interaction with people and in this work and uh, for me when I first in introduced myself into this work and got into this work is that uh, oh my god I need to learn more about Sufism or fourth way or um, transactional analysis that I can actually do this work but um, what what I also want to say to those who are listening who are listening and watching is that in order to take part in this work it's the theory or the esoterics is not so it's not in the center it's the essence is in the center and 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 yet the methods and the techniques and the ideas are really exciting yeah. and 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 i hope that people will be interested in them because i love to to introduce people to the law of seven and the law of three and the law of one those are all of the universal laws that are embedded in the symbol of the Enneagram. And then we can open up to the, the, the potential of qualities of the heart that we all have that are also embodied in that symbol, the virtues, um, and of course the essence qualities. And so, you know, I am, I have a lot to share. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I only share when people ask. So I'm, I'm really hoping that people come and ask for what they want. Beautiful and owning their responsibility for, for their own needs and wants. That's beautiful invitation. Would you like to speak more about the Enneagram? How is that incorporated in this work? And, uh, and I, I, I personally know that it's a personality integration tool. Uh, it's a, um, it's, it's the classification for personalities that also psychologists use um, to in therapies and all, all that kind of things. But how do you use that uh, tool in this work? Well, I got interested in the Enneagram several decades ago and, and initially through the Gurdjieff work. And the Gurdjieff work um, does not specifically talk about the Enneagram as a personality typing um, modality. Um, however, the students of Gurdjieff that did take this Enneagram symbol and turn it into a tool for psychology have really added something to the work. Mm. And the, again, psychologists and the, and the, at the shallowest level of the Enneagram personality, it's kind of like, oh, this is the type I am and, and he's that type and that's why we don't get along. And, and that's not what it's about. Um, and so I don't, use it. I don't use it that way. It's about 
Ha. <sighs> At the very origin of this typing typology is that we come in with a certain temperament. Mm. We just come into the world with this temperament. And it is in part created at the time of our separation from source. Okay, so when we're born, we are ripped away from this beautiful held connection in our mother's womb, um, which is our connection to all life. And then suddenly we're ripped away from it. And, and of course, you know, we believe that it's, it's more than just that physical separation that we literally our souls that originated from a universal place and then suddenly we're born into these bodies as squealing little humans that are helpless and we don't understand anything in it and it's scary and it's painful and each of us experiences this separation um, according to our type this is what the enneagram posits so I can feel, for example, a loss of uh, vitality, or I can feel a loss of unity, or I can feel a loss of the deep mystery that I'm longing to get back to, or um, true objective knowledge, or whatever it is that, that I feel most hurt by, most wounded by. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I start developing ways of compensating for that, of trying to get it back. And that turns into a personality structure. Right. Okay. And yeah. so inherent in that is that when we do this work, we use the strengths of our type and our essence qualities to work through the issues around personality. So very similar to TA. <laughs> um, and then what starts to emerge as we are also working to integrate our three centers is these very special heart qualities emerge that we call the virtues. And these are things like, like innocence and, um, inclusion and equanimity and just uh, humility and just beautiful, beautiful spaces that all of us can have. In other words, not just by our type. We, we kind of come up through our type and then all the others become available to us. Mm -hmm. So the way that we'll be working with it is I like to be what I call aspirational. I think that people like to work towards something really positive instead of working on the negative. Mm. So I like to show us what's possible. What is our potential? What is real human potential? Mm. And it's and I'm using the Enneagram as a as a way of saying, here are these nine ways, because Enneagram means nine points, here are these nine incredible essential qualities that we all have. Wow, that's amazing. And so, so we'll be doing some exercises to embody that. Um, because again, it's, it's not enough to just think about it, or explain it or talk about it. Yeah, that's and only one It's only one center. And then sometimes our heart is opening and we sort of have this felt sense of it, but we don't know how to use it in the world. So that's where embodying then becomes important. And when we put all three centers together, then we really experience it. Wow, that is beautiful. And it also sounds, sounds magical for only five days <laughs> to experience. And actually that it brings me to the next question of, you mentioned resistance earlier and how the personality uh, tries to prevent uh, us from shining our essence. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, would you speak more into the resistances that usually most commonly come up when uh, coming in contact with this work? 
ah, with the, the beautiful part is that whatever resistance has come to this work are the resistances that we all have out in the world. Mm. So when they come up in this space, we get to see them and mm. we get to say, oh, yeah, this is exactly what happens to me in the world. So as many resistances as there are individuals, okay. Right. So, <laughs> but, but commonly, um, you know, in the beginning it's hard and then people are telling themselves, oh, I'm not good enough or I can't do this or I'm dyslexic or I'm not coordinated. Those are the kinds of things that that not good enough is, is a very common resistance that comes up. Mm. Um, sometimes we get really angry. Sometimes anger comes up because it would be really easy to teach these movements so that you could get it really easily, mm. but we don't. We make it harder. Mm. And that can be really frustrating sometimes. And we want to see what happens. At what point does frustration become resistance? Right. And at what point does it drive you through? Because you can also use that energy. So sometimes resistance is, can be a gift. Amazing. That's fabulous. And to just... Uh become aware of the energy that is there and then harvest it as a force of nature, basically. That's it is a force of nature. It's coming straight from you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. Um, I, I have one more question. And that is that um, uh, we didn't go into introductions at the beginning, and I have my reasons because I, I I'm I'm a person who wants to dive in and I want to dive deep, and I I just want to go right in there. And you have a have decades of history with this work and uh, with your practices and your offerings and your uh, own journey, and I'm wondering. Um, what would you like to share about that journey? Uh, if so, and how how do you see you personally learning this yourself and teaching it yourself uh, over these decades? Decades. How is it affecting you personally and the world transpersonally? How do you see that? How 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 do you see the effect of the past decades of your life? You're, 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 you're self-learning and teaching this art and work. Well, I think possibly I would not be alive today if I hadn't met this work. Mm -hmm. um, I was a classic type A driving workaholic um, driven by my, now I understand better, my Enneagram type, which wants to fix the world and protect all the vulnerable people and to do it with passion and, and overpowering everything around me. Um, so when I came into contact with this work, I was very resistant to it. I was resistant to slowing down. I was resistant to meditation. I was resistant to anything that didn't seem practical. Mm. And there was something about my experience in the movements, particularly, that sort of gave me a taste of presence, where things suddenly, just for a moment, just a flash, lined up. And I wasn't thinking crazily about something I needed to do at work or worried about my kids or angry with my husband, whatever it was. I was here I was here in this body with all of me working and it I just suddenly felt that it was so important and I didn't know why but I also knew I had never experienced it any other way so that began the journey um, I had also in my life managed to shove aside all of my 
questions about the life that isn't very practical. In other words, I had been a seeker in my youth and I had just decided it wasn't practical. And so this work allowed me to open up again to that, um, not without resistance, not without skepticism. And so I think that my own slow but sincere journey through this work has very definitely changed the way that I work with people. Um, it changed the way that I wanted to show up in leadership roles. Um, it has impacted the people and the teams that I've led. Um, yeah, I'm not the same person that I was 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. This wow. work is powerful. It's profound. Yeah. And it can work with skeptical people. In <laughs> fact, you know, most of us say don't believe anything you haven't experienced. Mm. Stay open to the ideas and the methods only as far as you try them. And if they don't work, then you go into something else. Uh, that I feel, I feel, thank you for sharing that. And I, I feel that is extremely empowering to hear that, to hear that don't believe anything unless you've experienced it yourself, to, to not take anything given and not take anything out of your own system, but to own the responsibility and power in owning what's true for yourself. What do you know by your own experience? And, or, or I, what do I know by my own experience? And how is my body or my heart or my head responding to different things? And I don't have to agree. <laughs> Not have to agree. Agreeing is kind of useless. So what does that even mean? You know, well, what so is I don't have my to idea? Yeah. What is my idea? What is my truth? And I don't have to please or be of the same opinion and we can still love each other and uh, co-create. And I can allow for my opinion to change and be changed by hearing yours. Yeah, give more insights of, about myself, yeah. Wow, this has been so powerful. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, Thank you for, for taking the time, for creating this space. <laughs> for organizing this retreat that I feel will truly be transformational. For I, me. I, for me as well, I believe so. And for those who are joining us. So, um, yeah. So you will be here at Nikola Temple, Finland, um, uh, July 23rd to 28th. And um, all the info regarding that retreat it will be provided in the comments of this recording and there's a Facebook event there. So please check out the details and um, email me at raisa.olias at gmail.com to register and find out the details about uh, how to uh, claim your own spot in this mystical and mysterious uh, retreat that will blow your mind and change your life <laughs> and I will add, add the uh, further further uh, details as well so don't worry if, if my name or anything else would just pass you by right now you will get them in written form as well thank you so much Carol and I look forward to meeting you in person me too.